to another video guys welcome 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 happy to have you happy to be sharing with you as usual um today i'm going to talk a little bit about carnival now if you are a carnival lover a party lover you're going to enjoy some of the information that i'm sharing with you just now um if you're a teacher of theater arts you're going to be even more ecstatic to have this information and if you're a student of theater arts you are going to be in a happy place whenever you see this video so thank you for tuning in um if this is your first time and you've not yet subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button below so you'll never miss another of these exciting videos all right so i'm going to start by showing you a video of a presentation that i did with a group of Jamaica, Jamaican theatre arts teachers. And that will set the background for the first bit of information that I wish to share with you. It will cover, you know, the general history and origin of carnival. So take a look. Understanding carnival has to come through how we understand Masquerade or John Kuno, because that's our entry point. It's the same kind of energy that we give to John Kuno when you become the character and you start taking on all that drama. It's the same kind of energy that we give to the carnival. Now, the platform set earlier, when we discussed, uh, we started discussing landship in terms of that masquerade feel, because that is where the carnival genesis actually started, especially within the Caribbean. Now, Kind of unfortunate for us as Jamaicans, we never get much of them carnival people as our colonizers. So we never had that carnival piece, so we had to import it. And because we imported it, we don't have an entire carnival season of festivities that the other Caribbean island, islands have. So we have centered carnival for ourselves in what we know the answer, which is about good effect and party and going on the road in pretty costume. In the other parts of the Caribbean, we have an entire month, or maybe even longer, of festivities. And as a result of that, carnival is a composite form. What do we mean by a composite form? Anybody? It has many forms. Many forms. And so carnival by itself is almost like a season. And so if you're going to look at carnival, in terms of carnival itself, will never be finished. Never be finished. Because Carnival is large. Do you mind if I put on the mic? No. Carnival is very wide. And so it's very composite. It is made up of these other forms. So during a carnival season, what you'll have, you'll have various festivals where the other forms will be celebrated. So for example, a jab jab. Jab jab by itself is a grenade and form. And that's an entire thing by itself. However, you'll have jab jab festivals during a carnival season and that is why it is so composite so when we look at it you have to look at carnival when you look at carnival you must look at the masquerade component we all know that history of the of the of the colonizers the european people with their own mask balls and it is out of that that the carnival celebration or the masquerade celebration of the people in the caribbean started because they having their own mask balls the slaves could have their own mask balls because that was safe. Remember, a number of those practices were banned for the slaves. However, by performing the mask balls that the Europeans were performing, they were able to do it and to do so freely without it seeing as a threat. And so what they started doing was putting in the African concept of masks. And so the masks were different from what the Europeans wore. Now, if we understand what happens within the African sensibility and the African worldview about masks and headdress, the more elaborate, the more higher your status. Yes, yes, the headdresses, the more elaborate, the, more, the higher your status was. And so they became a lot more creative. And so, especially within the, the Caribbean territories where the French settled, you had carnival took root more than in the others. And Trinidad so happens to have been one of those territories. And so that is why people talk a lot about Trinidad Carnival because they have a number of festivities and festivals that happen during the entire carnival process. And so what we want to try and understand today, we have to understand the content and the concept and the history, the history behind the carnival as we try to use it for playmaking, right? The, the, the parade as well within carnival 
and the masks, they represent the, the faces of the people who would have traversed the Caribbean. And so by the 1950s, within the, the carnival, the face started changing. So it was not only about the Europeans, but remember we had invented laborers, so it's the Chinese who have come with their own masks, but the Indians, everybody. And so what you find is that the parade reflected the faces of these different people. As it got to the 1970s or later on, it became more creative, yeah? Because people started putting in other African elements, and that's how you end up with your Boko Jumbi, the people on the stairs, right? And many of the other forms that we'll see, and that is why you also have the similarities across the Caribbean. So we started with John Clay as an entry point because that is, that is of us. But we know that John Clay is not carnival, but we understand that it's also from the masquerade family. However, if we examine the carnival characters, what we are going to find, we are going to find a lot of similarities. And it's not just here in Jamaica, but if you look across the Caribbean and what exists, you are going to find a lot of similarities with all the Caribbean islands because of the African influence that exists and the level of creativity that exists. All right, so you would have seen the video. It's a mouthful, quite a, few, a lot to take in. But I just want to add a quick disclaimer before I move on that. You'll hear me talk about John Kuhn in that video. Now, that video was done because for a group of Jamaican teachers as we were trying to understand how it is that the carnival as a cultural form can be utilized in playmaking and in order for us as Jamaicans to understand fully how the carnival works, um, it'd be for us to look at it and examine it through the lens of the John Kuno masquerade, because that's the lens that we have, because it doesn't, um, Carnival doesn't hold the same kind of historical significance, right? And so in understanding John Kuno and looking at it through that lens, that masquerade component of it, it would make it easier for us to understand. So that out of the way, let us just do a quick recap of some of the facts and some of the must knows that we want to do about Carnival. And one of them is that Carnival is not a day, but it's an entire, season secondly we want to understand about carnival that carnival is composite it's a composite art form or a composite cultural form where it includes all or most or a range of other cultural forms carnival also uses strong masquerade elements because both of them are almost intrinsically woven because it is these masquerade um elements and masquerade components that help to make up the general carnival season that you're going to have and so on the day you'll find a lot of uh, festivities you know the, 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 John, the different bands that are coming out the damn Loren, the the blue devils and and the list goes on just a range of, of the characters and when we start looking at the characters we list out some more of them fourthly we want to point out is that carnival is polymorphic polymorphic let me make sure i pronounce it properly it's polymorphic in nature because what it simply means is that it changes over time it's like a creature that continues to change um remember what carnival was at its inception that's not what carnival is today it would have changed over the period of time and it continues to do that because like everything else it evolves and the evolution might include um including the culture of of other people and the faces of other people would have impacted the Caribbean or the space in a significant way. And so the, 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 the mass makers, as in MAS makers, will eventually um, incorporate these as part of the overall creativity and innovation within Carnival. So yes, it will continue to change over a period of time. And so we cannot overlook that. And uh, for our Jamaican people, I just want to remind you that carnival in Jamaica is imported. And so it doesn't have the same kind of historical significance. It was imported in the 1990s by Baron Lee, right? That's how it came to us here within Jamaica. But nonetheless, we celebrate it and we enjoy it just the same. All right, so we want to look at some of the other facts that would have been highlighted in that video. Just now, under the history the history of the, of, the, of the cultural form. And we talk about how it came to be within the Caribbean. As it's, it's, it's European influence while it's here. Remember, the Caribbean was colonized by various people. Um, and so in those Caribbean territories where the French settlers or the French settlers took root, then Carnival thrived better in those. And Trinidad so happened to have been one of those um, Caribbean islands. And for this video, you're going to hear me make reference a lot to Trinidad 
because the truth is the example of what carnival is about in terms of its purpose and its historical significance it's in trinidad and i will say unapologetically right now that within the caribbean trinidad is the capital of carnival within the caribbean hands down it doesn't get better than that because you can find all the various examples that you want there no offense to my other caribbean people um no offense to my fellow jamaicans either but we have to give unto caesar what is due unto caesar right so let us continue in looking at that and so it's one of those territories where the french settlers would have taken root right and so those european settlers french settlers who were of a catholic faith you're going to find that you found that during that time within the Caribbean, they would practice their own carnival. Somebody might ask why Catholic, somebody who don't understand would ask why Catholic, because the whole idea of the carnival and the festivities and celebration, that was birthed out of a, um, a Catholic tradition where the settlers um, would enjoy a period of period of set festivities before going into their Lenten period. And so when those um, settlers were here in the Caribbean, they continued that specific um, tradition. And so they would have elaborate mask balls. And while they were having these elaborate mask balls, the slave and slaves would then be left on their own to do their own thing. Now, what was good for the enslaved in this particular um, time was that they were left on their own, so they were able to better carry on their practices. What is crucial for us to remember, though, is that the practices of the enslaved, a number of them were banned, and so they would have gone underground. But during this period of time when the, um, the colonizers were engaged with their mask balls, their mask fest festivities. It gave the enslaved an opportunity at this point to have their own kind of festivities. And what they would do during this time was that they would incorporate within those festivities their own traditional African practices as long as whatever it is that they were doing remained acceptable to the colonizers. And so a number of African elements eventually crept into um, their own celebrations and it eventually evolved to what it is that we have today as carnival and remember the influence of other persons even existed because we didn't only have the the enslaved remember we had the indentured labor so other faces came to the caribbean the chinese the indians among others and their culture that they would have carried with them would also you know make its way into the carnival celebrations and the parade hence some of what it is that we end up end up with today and that is why when you say people talk about the Caribbean being a melting pot, this is what we talk about because of the various faces and people that would have come to the Caribbean, carry a piece of their culture with them, and they would then leave them right here. And so we celebrate as a result of that. Of course, if you go back into your history, then of course you will get to know all of these things. So let's talk a little bit about the elements of the cultural form. Now, the syllabus would give you to look at the physical elements and the symbolic elements. And when you think about the physical elements, you're thinking about paraphernalia, you're thinking about the music, the sound, the dance or the movement, the props, the dress, the various roles that we can find within the cultural form. Those are the things that make up the physical elements. And then for the symbolic elements, it's looking at the spiritual, it's looking at the historical, it looking at the, it's looking at the economic. And so we are going to be looking at those. Now, one of the things I want to point out about looking at the elements of carnival, it's that you don't have any one or specific element or that you must have. Because in examining the physical elements, you must look at the type of um, masquerade that is being celebrated at the particular time because there's no one set movement as a result of the composite nature of carnival. The composite nature of carnival allows for a range of movements based on the character, based on the, the form or the masquerade element that is being celebrated at a particular time. And the same thing goes for the dress. The same thing goes for the type of props. And so we are going to look at a video at this point. And this particular video um, is about one of the, 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 the masquerade mass that, you know, is that generally takes place within these, during these um, carnival festivities. And after we look at it, then we will use that particular one to highlight and identify the various physical elements, after which I will speak briefly about the, um, we'll talk about the symbolic elements after that.
So that was the Blue Devil Mass. And um, we just want to examine a range of the elements. And we, we, could, we could see a number of the physical elements that we mentioned earlier. So we're going to look at the music, the sound, the various props, the, the, the dress, and the movements that we can identify within, the, um, within that, that particular mass. And those are the various things that would make up the element for that mass if we are discussing it. And so we want to start with looking at the music. Um, yes, generally, when we, think about, um, when we think about carnival, our music that we want to look at is the, 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 the calypso, we want to look at the soca, and we want to look at the use of the steel pan. But when we look at this specific mass and in identifying the music and looking more so the, the instruments that they were utilizing to play um, and to produce the music, it becomes even more important. And so we want to look at the beating of the, the, the biscuit tin, yeah, to give us that authentic sound and that different sound that it had. Um, you want to look at the, the tambo, the type of drum, is a specific kind of drum, they call it a tambo bamboo that produces a certain kind of sound. They were using whistle because you could hear the whistle that gives you the sound in the, in the background. But what was important is that there was a yelping sound. Yep, whatever that sound was that they were making as they were going along and they were using their voices to produce that sound and that's a part of what that particular mass about is about when they produce their music. Right? The biscuit tin, um, it, was, it, was, it was beaten, some of them were using what you call a crude stick to produce the, to produce the, the sound that they wanted. Um, some persons were probably using cowbells, so they were using a range of percussion instruments from time to time to give you the quality sound. And so the music of the of the of the of the 
blue mass might give you a different sound as opposed to when you now go on to take on another mass and so in discussing the music of carnival as an element you have to look at the musical instruments and importantly you have to also add the sound that comes with the cultural form all right so uh the next thing we want to look at we want to look at roles i want to look at people um now if you examine the video closely you would see that there was one person who one of the characters who was dancing up a storm and he was roped by another character now the character who was being roped and restrained is often referred to as the king devil yes and he is supposedly to be painted as the the the, the as the character who was more dangerous than everybody else and so he had to be restrained right and you had the principal dancer who was going along with him and, and playing out that role and restraining him and pulling him back so different things were happening within that scene and so when we start to talk about the drama in it when we're looking at the playmaking then we will discuss that more in detail but right now we just want to highlight these different roles that they play and what you found what, what, what you found happening in that is that you need to have that king devil because of who the, the blue devils were and so everybody in this pack had a leader and that leader would have been the king devil who's the more menacing of all and so you had to you had to protect him and so of course we know that the the the, the character of the devil is one of the, the the strong traditional carnival characters that you have and so in the blue mask here you had the king devil along with all the others and so in addition to the king devil and all these other characters that we're seeing in the blue devil mask there are a range of other characters that would also explore i'll talk about when we're talking about carnival and so we'll talk about the damn Lauren, we'll talk about the baby doll uh bookman uh, barakeet fancy sailor the cow bands the dragon fancy indians jab molasse midnight robbers and a whole lot more and so if you just do a quick research then you'll be able to identify these range of characters that you we often explore persons explore whenever it is that you know they're having these various carnival celebrations that people will take on but we might also want to move on from just the people to talking about the range of props that we were also seeing and if you look closely at the video you're going to realize that persons were carrying a range of, 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 of weapons Yes, and look back at the various instruments that they were carrying. Some had machetes, some had the, the thing on, you know, axe. That's what you call it, maybe an axe. So they had a range of different things that they were carrying. You, found, you, you also had some people carrying in that video, there was one man with a, a pouch with a baby. Yes, and so you'll be able to see all these different um, props that are coming out that they were utilizing to help to make their mask what they want their mask to be about or what the mask is supposed to actually be about for us to fully understand it again you can look at the dressing right first and foremost what was obvious and what stood out and we can see why they are called the blue devil because they look so menacing but they are all covered in blue from their very heads down to their very toes now that tells us okay they are the blue devils yeah and so that dress is completely different from what it is that you would see for somebody who is doing the jab jab because jab jab people be covered in black yes if you are playing the role of maybe a pierre grenade or a dame Lorraine, you are going to look different in terms of what it is that you wear and what it is that you carry and so it is important for us to examine the roles in that particular way and so in looking at the movements now we want to examine some of what we actually saw in the in the video for our own understanding of the movements remember i said earlier that there is no one specific movement for the entire carnival session it's as a result of the type of mass that you're playing and so in the blue devil mass we saw a range of things that mean persons were leaping in the air you know they were probably they were lunging at the victims you saw rolling on the ground persons lying on the ground when i was doing my research there was one researcher who referred to it as um trinidad style type of dancing and he talks about the spread knee in an angular position and strutting and he talked about the pelvic grinding with the arms moving forward or extended forward and that was how she described 
the the movement so to speak of the um the blue the, the blue mass the people who play the blue mass yes mm -hmm. and so when you put all of that together with the leaping and the and the whining and the lunging etc then you get a specific set of movement for that particular mass i'm sure however if you look at the um the other type of mass you're going to find that the movements are different but some of them will be very similar as well for others but you'll also find some differences but nonetheless if you want to examine the movements in detail you must pay attention to the type of, of characters or the players or the roles and so all the elements are very much intertwined they are not by themselves they don't operate alone they have to work together yes and so we have looked at the physical elements and we saw all of those things coming out in the um coming out in the video and so we just want to do a quick thing on the symbolic elements quickly and so when you talk about the spiritual element of it you want to look at the fact that the music and the sound that's coming out in the music it has the power to invoke a certain kind of spiritual essence in individuals as you're paying attention um when you look at at, 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 and if you should talk to some of these different individuals, what they'll allow you to understand is that the moment you put on the, the moment you put on the, 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 the blue paint, once you become blue and then you hear the music starts, there's a certain kind of transformation they believe that happens to you when you become the, the, um, when you become the character. And so the music and the sound, it has the, it has the potential to invoke that kind of spiritual essence in you for you to understand it from that, from that particular perspective. Um, there's also the direct or the indirect influence of the Roman Catholicism on the, um, on the cultural form. And we talk about that when we were looking, when we were looking at the origin in terms of where it came and how it was birthed out of a Catholic tradition, but it has now evolved into what is more African um, in nature you know and very caribbean as well but also what is important to note is that for some of these um for some of these masquerade things that we are also going to see in the festivities you will see the inclusion of other religious forms or aspects for example maybe like an orisha you know what and, and all of that is communicated through the use of mask Yes, because whatever the spiritual element is when you create your mask and whatever it is that you're putting on, most of these African um, celebrations and the practices are very much spiritual in nature. And you'll find that once you're creating or the players of the mask are creating, they are going to incorporate elements of those, maybe subtly, some might be overtly, but you'll find that these things are included but even some of the music as well while they're played using particular instruments you're also going to find that it would include maybe aspects of different um religious african religious um songs or expressions let me use the word expression as opposed to songs you'll find those things coming out in the um in the in, in the mass itself yes and some of the sounds that you hear coming out in the various masquerades, there are expressions or spiritual expressions of survival, yeah, and resilience of a people. And that is how you find the spiritual element taking place. So in the music and the dance that you're going to hear, the indirect influence of the Roman Catholicism, the inclusion of um, aspects of various African religion and expressions, we may be through the Orisha, through the use of their mask and the various masquerades that you'll see, as well as the sounds that are expressions of survival and resilience. Don't forget that, guys, if you're liking the content and you're liking whatever it is that you're hearing and you're finding it useful, please to give this video a thumbs up and just hit the subscribe button as we go along, right? So let us just move on now to the ritualistic element now for the ritualistic for the ritualistic element um what you find is that ritual is that this thing happens every year around the same time and that in and of itself um is a is, is a ritual and um, it is something that you look forward to but it goes beyond that because the purpose doesn't change and so even though the the carnival evolves over time the purpose remains and and that historical significance significance is there 
And so as individuals, you transform and you become. So it's almost like a right of renewal. So each time you play and each year you play, it's like you are a new person. You, you've renewed, you engage, you celebrate, you rejuvenate, and then tomorrow you repeat it or next year you repeat it. Yes, and so each year you've been anticipating, you're waiting, you're going along and you are preparing in the same way or in different ways. And then, of course, you get into that process of renewal, rebirth, and then you, it is over and then you get ready again for next year. It's like you do it over. So that ritualistic nature of the, of the cultural form is important. And so we want to now look at the the historical elements yes another of the symbolic elements would be the historical one and one of the things about carnival as a historical significance has to do with the rites of affirmation during this period of celebration in carnival what it is doing it is affirming and reaffirming the people of the caribbean who we really are and so for example within a trinidad um, space whenever it is that they would have carnival friday or whichever of the carnival days that they tend to have the, the Cambly celebrations. And my Trinity people, you can correct me if I'm getting it incorrect if it's not a Friday. But during that time when they have the carnival and the Cambly celebrations, where it is accompanied by, you know, the various songs, um, the African drumming, the stick fighting, um, the flicker of the flambo, and the flambo, the flambo, as so it is sometimes pronounced, is what um, in Jamaica here some people call it bakalam and in other places people call it bottle torch all right that's what it is that is that is significant of a very important history in the lives of the people of Trinidad because if we go back again into history you're going to be looking at the the Cambly riots that took place in Trinidad and so during this period of celebration when they would have the Cambly um festival, the Carnival Friday, sorry, when they would have the Cambly Street Theater. Um, that is a part of the, of, of the reminder and the affirmation of who you are as a people, like the kind of resilience that we talk about, the kind of resilience that Caribbean people have and how it is that they rose above the adversity to be who they are today. And so that's a part of the historical um, symbolism, so to speak, or the historical element of carnival um, and, and then the the economic significance again because we talk about the economic element that the syllabus wants us to talk about and so in talking about that you want to look at the overall commercialization of of, of, of carnival because while there is that deep rooted historical significance that's grounded in history and affirms who we are and give us that sense of the ancestry Yes, there's also that commercialized component of, of, of carnival. Because the truth is, when you look at the hundreds and the thousands of people who make their way to the Caribbean each year for these different festivals, and again, I will reference Trinidad, and I talk already, and I said it unapologetically about it being the mecca of, 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 Trinidad, of, of carnival within the Caribbean. I can't overlook it. The amount of people who are the hundreds of people who traverse and make their way to that space, you know, that's a major contributor to the country's um, GDP. And so it has that kind of economic significance. But not just that, when you think about the various jobs that are created just around these various carnival um, festivities, you know, you also realize that it has serious um, economic, you know, serious economic gain and economic significance. And so while the people who are engaged in the, particip in, in the participation, they are not necessarily engaged in the participation for the state that, you know what, let us do this for money. But it is also a part of it because it's a part of the history, a part of our celebration. And so you're also commercializing this. It's almost like you're selling it to other people. It's a way for others to get involved and others get a chance to celebrate with you. And so you cannot ignore that economic value Yes, that carnival has. Some people will argue that this kind of economic um, the commercialization of it will remove some of the, the history 
or some of its significance and its purpose. But that's debatable, and that is something that we can talk about in the, in, in the comment section if you want. So put your comments below, and let us talk about if that's how you feel about it, yes? So let us talk and examine how it is that the countries will benefit, you know, and then how it is that people benefit, etc. And when we think now about the practitioners of the form, that is also very crucial in understanding or looking at carnival. And when you think about the practitioners, you're thinking about the people who continuously engage with the form in one shape or another. And so for starting, now we're just listing them real quickly and we're moving along. You have to look at writers, how it is that the, the writers use the form and to tell the story with the form as part of the engine. So for example, let us look at um, Derek, Derek Walcott's Tijan, Tijan and his brothers. Yes, where the, the play utilizes the Calypso to drive the overall story. If you've not read it, go and read it. Look at it. It's one of them to study. Yes, how it is that the, the, the various cultural form will be used to drive the play. But you also want to look at the various theater practitioners who will stage different form of theater productions and they will use the carnival or masquerade as the cultural form that they are using to drive the story, right? For their directorial choices that they've made. So you want to also examine those. But um, a very prominent person though, that if we are going to look also at practitioners of form, you might want to also look at um, Peter Minshall is often referred to as the mass man. Yes, look at some of his work and how it is that he utilizes the, the mass elements and the masquerade elements in his work as because as one of the top and major designers within the Caribbean. And of course, this particular work would have also seen Mr. Minshall gracing the international stage with his work because he would have designed the float for numerous Olympics. Yes, the opening ceremony of numerous Olympics that would have um, that would have taken place. So those are also some of the people. But you want to look at even some of our contemporary people. You want to look at the soca, the various soca artists in terms of what it is that they are putting out there, because they are also part of the practitioners of the form. The way because they continue to maintain the music that they continue to play and they continue to create music year after year after year for you and I to continue to enjoy this particular um, cultural form, yes? And now you want to also look at how it is that we utilize the ver exploring the use of the, of the cultural form elements generally in our stage work. And we want to make a comparison between the actual um, cultural form in its authentic state versus it being in its staged state. So in its authentic state, what you're going to find, you're going to have the parades happening on the road. You're going to have people utilizing all the various elements. So yes, the blue mask people will definitely go blue. And the blue is going to, that they're going to be wearing their paint. They're going to be carrying their rope. They're going to be carrying all the things that they're supposed to carry. So they are in a space that will facilitate them doing all the things that are necessary to make the ritual of the cultural form happen. However, in its staged state, what you'll find is that you will not see everything that the form embodies, but you might choose an element that you're going to utilize. And so if you're using the Blue Devils, for example, in a staged performance, you may not want to paint your body. You might decide to get a costume that is fully blue and put it on and so people can realize that. But what is the significance of the, of, of the Blue Devil? Because it must serve a purpose. And so based on what the purpose is, if you're the Blue Devil and you're menace, menacing and you want to pull from that video where you had the rope man who was roping and reining in that King Devil who is supposed to be so dangerous, that might just be the only aspect that you choose and put it on stage and so you'll transform your space into whatever it is that you want and then you are going to so curb or taper or adjust your movement to make it more suitable for whatever the stage the, um, performance is yes and so i want us now to look at uh, um this short clipping and after this short short clipping we will have a conversation with a director who would have utilized the cultural form in one of his works? Jesus Christ, man, what is the damn country coming to? I want to get a goddamn smoke!
is a part in the syllabus that speaks to um, the utilization of cultural form in a staged state versus its authentic state. And in its staged state, I know you would have been um, one of the directors who would have, you know, used the form in your, one of your recent works that I have witnessed, um, the T. John and his brothers. And I just want to sh you to share just a little bit about how it is that you, you made a decision or why it is that you chose to use the carnival as the engine, you know, within the, within the text, in staging the text and why those choice of characters, etc. Well, uh, much of it wasn't my choice really. Much of it is what's um, obligated in the, in the, in the text. Mm -hmm. Right, um, Tijan is it, it, it uses a, a Saint Lucian folk tale, right, um, as its uh, structural device um, and its mode of telling the story, um, and what that involves is is um, certain folk characters uh, and certain carnival characters. Um, for instance, I like to think that you can think of the equivalent of, um, of masquerade out of which came um, carnival uh, right. in, 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 in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, um, in Jamaica, it is John Canoe. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and in a way, John Canoe is the repository of, of all the traditional forms. The, the, the carnival is, is a repository. Um, so in a sense, it, y y all these characters um, in, in, in the folk tale, all the traditional characters come up mm. in, 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 in carnival. Um, and where in the Caribbean, for instance, you, you, they, they, they have a, a habit or a tradition of still using or still employing um, the traditional characters in their carnival. You see this. Right. You, you see it from time to time in, uh, mm -hmm. in Trinidad carnival. Right. Last time we went to Carnival in Trinidad, for instance, there was a traditional character, band. But in some years, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. You just have the, you know, the, the sort of um, fancy Carnival. Mm -hmm. you know? um, uh, but, but so, so there's, it, it, so the, the, the point I'm making there is that essentially is that um, the Carnival is a, is a repository. Um, of a lot of the folk traditions and the folk motifs. Right. And in this play, Tijan's Brothers, um, the various of these characters are used, the traditional characters. Um, Walcott has drawn on from the folk tale, um, which was prevalent in, in um, in St. Lucia and from the carnival. thing there is that you have three or four essential categories of characters. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have the, the animals, right. the, um, the storytellers. Mm -hmm. You have, you have the, the devil and his assistant, the, mm -hmm. the uh, devils, um, and you have the bowler. Right. Right. Um, and I think the question you, you, you're asking me is the choices, how to use these characters that, as I earlier suggested, um, can be found in the repository of the carnival. Um, how you use them? Well, as, as I was saying too, the, the, the playwright give you the clues, but you can still miss them. You know, they, mm -hmm. that, that, uh, they give, it gives you the clues by weaving these various characters in the structure of the play. Right. Now, the specific part I remember when I watched the play, and I think it had to do with when the brothers would have either defied the devil or, you know, and he called out his helpers mm -hmm. 
to, 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 to put them, I don't know, is that to kill them, to get rid of them? Yeah, so yeah. the angry, the but their side of the bargain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And I, then I noticed that you had some masqueraders mm. at that point, because you did make the point earlier in the conversation that the devil had his minions. Is it mm. And I'm assuming these are the little helpers that would come out. Right. In time to help you. Well, well, I just well, want to talk the, about that part a bit. Yeah. The, 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 um, tell you the truth, I don't even remember some of the characters, but that's all right. They were, they were the job jobs. Right. right, which is mm -hmm. um, um, devil characters, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, 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 um, I also use the Jamaican. I think I took something from the Jamaican folklore, which is the um, the rolling calf. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, and in the folklore, it, it is said that the rolling calf used you. What you used to hear when you 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 know the rolling calf coming is the is the chains that tie the right. yeah. mm -hmm. So that I, I just used basically the chains. And that was was um was um a symbolic element that I used to represent the ruling calf. Right. Um the the, the also the, one of the things that, that that you also see in terms of the generative use of of the the, um, the devils mm. is that they are involved in key areas from the beginning. Mm -hmm. the they are involved in the in setting up the challenge. The right. With that setting up a challenge. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, if you can make me get vex, then I will give you riches. Right. If you if you fail, I will I will eat you. I'll consume you. Mm -hmm. um, um, in other words, you, you, if you, you if you, because the issue of power too, right? Uh, that's when, 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 when you, if you can think of it, when you get somebody who's in control of a situation, angry, is when their power starts to teeter on its on its balance, right? Right. You hit, you, 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 you sort of hit them off off of the balance. They get upset. Right, um, um, uh, which means you are you are almost be, uh, coming into an empowering situation, mm -hmm. um, and so that is the challenge that is set, and then um, they come back mm -hmm. when when the first two brothers who lost who lose the battle, um, and therefore are going to be devoured by the devil, right into the final confrontation. And so that fi the final confrontation is about, you know, the tussle between them and the protagonists. Right. Know, they fall back mm -hmm. So it was was a finding a way to to uh, realize that confrontation um, theatrically, mm -hmm. uh, which we did through movement. Right. I, I gave that challenge to um, a choreographer. Right. Um, who kind of um, manifested it in, in some kind of way. Um, I would still like to find a better way to get that done, but... Right, right. That, that was the challenge. But that, well, that's, that's, that's particularly useful for this conversation, Mr. Williams, given the fact that even though you're going for it theatrically, you, you had a choreographer attempted to create that challenge between the antagonist and the protagonist in the work still using the, the, um, the cultural form. Because some of the times when we think about putting the cultural form in its staged state, some persons may not necessarily look towards movement. So why is it that you thought it necessary to have had a choreographer um, pick the battle, create that battle to show us? Right. Well, first of all, you go back to you go you go back to what the playwright gave you, what the playwright is trying mm -hmm. to do. It's it's a folk drama, right? It's a folk fantasy. Mm. Uh, uh, what that means? Uh, it means um, there's a certain well, there's a certain quality about it. Mm -hmm. it has to have um, and certain elements 
Mm-hmm. You have song, you have dance, you must have music. Mm-hmm. Understand? You must be colorful. Such right. is, this is what this is what you have been given. This, these are the right. objects of the text. Right. right. So so the movement comes in there. Mm-hmm. Right? The movement slash dance comes in there. Um, uh, so the, hence that choice. The other thing that the teachers must 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 um, be mindful of is that you can do that and then just get decorative, you know, do a pretty dance. Mm-hmm. Um, but here again, if you if you you serious about um, the work and realizing that it's a work where your dance has to be generative, it has to it it has to um, be structural. Um, then you ask yourself, what is what is the action? Right. As in the spinal action. What mm-hmm. is that action that you're constructing? Right. 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 That mm-hmm. is what you're constructing. You're not, you're not just having pretty, pretty hold your frock and spin around and right, right. And kick up in the air and and, right. and and so on. Right. Um, so what is the action you're constructing in that moment? Mm-hmm. Um, and I would suggest that in, in a play like Tijon, that is required. All right, so we've come to the end of our discussion on carnival. It is not as action-packed with demonstrations that I would love, but I hope you did find the information quite useful. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as well. Tell me what you think. Let us have a conversation about the information that's here. Persons who are from other Caribbean islands, please share your story, share your experience, share your content, and so that together we can learn and together we can grow. Thank you so much for watching.